Hello, Lou. Guess who's coming to dinner? Well, good afternoon. Guess who's coming to dinner is here for lunch or brunch. Today, our guest is Councilwoman Keisha Dorsey from uh, Metro District 3. And she was in the green room. Uh, I'm going to get this green room thing down in a minute. Uh, but we're waiting for her to show back up so that we can start the conversation. I hope everyone is well, staying safe, masked up. Hope you've already gotten out to vote. Um, this is going into week three of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and we've had some really interesting guests um, to have a conversation about racism and finding solutions. Um, hoping that Miss Keisha will show me that she's back on camera, or if she can hear me, that we're ready to go. Hey. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. I oh, can hear you. Perfect. I can see you. <laughs> How are you? I, we are live and in living color now. Hello, hello. I'm. I am in transition. I. Uh, that's what happens when you're councilwoman. Yes, uh, darling. <laughs> so I am moving, but I definitely don't want to miss who's coming for dinner. And I'm in my kitchen right now, so I'm okay. in there for your praise. Oh. <laughs> oh, so you want to be? Uh, Set and scenery appropriate, huh? <laughs> so, Keisha, tell me what's going on in um, District 1. Tell me, I want to know. Oops, I lost you. I hear you. There you go. You're okay. back. Uh, I want you to tell me about the area that District 3 covers. And tell me what you've got going on for District 3. Any initiatives? Things you're working on, just talk to me. Just relax. Just sit oh, back. Just I'm gonna sit back, back and relax. Back. Um, and then um, going to a doctor's appointment actually. So, um, there's a lot going on in District Three, Miss Shannon, and I thank you for first of all having me on the show okay. um, because I'm really excited about one talking to a person who did so much in District Three by starting the Dirt Bowl. Uh, you're in District 3, so I'm really excited about that. Hold on one second. This one's on the line. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so what's going on in District 3? So the biggest thing is I have been elected for a little under two years. Two years will be in January. Okay. Um, and Ms. Janice, first of all, it started with uh, the tax increase last year. Okay. And that really forced property me. property tax increase. Yes, okay. that forced me to really understand uh, policy in a different way. So okay. a lot of people don't know that the Metro Council, the roles, the the terms of four years, the role is part time, and I thought, okay, you know, I'll be able to get a job and do this. But with this kind of change that that's really needed, I have been doing this full time. Um, which is very difficult for a millennial, um, I will say. <laughs> so we'll talk about retirement, all those kind of things. I've literally had, I shouldn't say had to, but I've chosen to put that aside um, in some of my personal endeavors to really dedicate the time to this community. So I, I thank you for asking me, what have I done and what am I doing? Because you would think, okay, if she's working full time, we need to see some results. And I'm excited about that. So the first thing is in the unincorporated areas, and hopefully, if you drive down Dixie Highway for the first time between uh, Algonquin Parkway and Miller's Lane, it's really kind of like a no man's land. It used okay. to be, it's, no, it's now called um, an unincorporated area, but no one really kind of took a responsibility for it. So I have been lobbying and finally got with the state and used uh, funding in which, by the way, if you're interested in how I'm using my funding, this millennial produces all her reports online. So you don't have to do an open records report to ask Councilwoman Dorsey how she is using her CIF and NDF funding. I think the public deserves to know what I'm doing with it. 
Um, so that is online. And I have put new lights up and down Dixie Highway and in the corridor of the unincorporated area so that it is not so dark. You asked me, okay, well, what are you doing that for? Um, I have started down the pathway called SEPTED, Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. Okay. okay. Well, you know, it's apropos to an extent when people are talking about um, re-looking at the way we police. And I challenge the fact that sometimes we, we call police when we have an emergency situation. But we really need to be looking at what we can do upstream ourselves with the environment that we create that may facilitate crime. So things like overgrown bushes, high grass, the amount of vacant and abandoned properties, how do we secure them, low lighting, um, even looking at things uh, when it comes to visibility in uh, right of ways. Uh, when you come out of, of some of these areas, like if, you, if you're coming out of Birmingham Lane, at, onto Dixie Highway, there's no light there. So it, you're really kind of like holding your life in your hand as you cross almost six lanes of traffic on Dixie Highway okay. uh, across the street. Or if you are in um, a low income area, something like um, something like West Louisville, where you have a lot of pedestrian traffic because a lot of people may not afford, not that they can't afford to have cars, but they can afford the insurance on cars that sometimes costs as much as the car payment. Uh, you get a lot of pedestrian traffic. What does that mean when you're trying to cross six and eight lanes of traffic when there's no uh, stoplight that may be um, a mile to a half mile apart and there's no crosswalk? Uh, so SEPTED really says, what can we do to prevent crime or what can we do to alleviate crime and other illegal or uh, incidences where they may not necessarily be illegal? But for example, jaywalking in the middle of the street technically is illegal. But if you need to get to the corner store, the corner store is in the middle of the block, but the next crosswalk is either six blocks up or six blocks, you know, to the north or south of you, and you're in the middle, you're going to crosswalk or you're going to jaywalk. So how do we understand Ms. Keisha. Yes, ma'am. You said the name of this program. Say that name again so I can okay. say uh, it again. I lost your sound. Septed. Septed. Yes, crime, uh, C-P-T-E-D, crime, crime prevention through environmental design. Okay, gotcha. Um, and so that's a big initiative that I'm working on. Uh, the other piece of this um, is, is really what I say, stop fighting um, fights and protests with your energy, um, with, with all your energy, meaning... And I want to define this. We can march all we want, but if we don't change the policy, then our marching is in vain. So let's use the, Find the solutions and let's also use our mind. Right. It's, yeah. it's a dual thing because I'm a march with you. I, I got on my tennis shoes, but I'm also going to use my mind. So what does that mean? So I made it my um, my mission that before my first term ended, my areas will be covered in, in policy. The way that we do that at the city is through neighborhood planning. Um, so I was able to get my first area done last year and I'm working on getting Shively done this year so that by the time my first term is up, my entire area will either have policy in place or be in the process of putting their own neighborhood centric policies in place. What does that mean? So that means when we're talking about boarding houses, when we're talking about drugstore or, or liquor stores, when we're talking about economic development, when we're talking about the rate of vacant and abandoned property, when we're talking about zoning utility, when you have industrial areas that directly abut residential areas, what does that mean? Like we can fight and we can protest all day long if we don't have policy in place that additionally says, yeah, this is eth ethically not right. And we know it. But now we have rules in place. We have policy in place that said not only is it non-ethical, but now it's it's against the civil policy of this area. And the beautiful thing about it is, Janice, that those neighborhood plans get adopted into the Louisville plan. So then if someone wants to put a liquor store in my area, I can protest all day long. The state can still approve it. Why? Because we don't have any policy currently that says, we don't want any more liquor stores in this area for these reasons. 
Now, once District 3 gets those policy recommendations in place, and then it's adopted into the 2040 plan, which is the process. Now, if I go to court and they try to sue me and they appeal it, or if I sue because they approve it, I can say, here are the findings of fact. And I've had to learn a lot of law without being a lawyer. But okay. here are the findings of fact. Now, the it doesn't agree with the neighborhood plan, and it goes against the Louisville Comprehensive Plan. So now I have basis for a lawsuit. So it's all about, for me, being smart um, and learning how to fight in a way that the American system was based upon. And that's law and policy. And, and how do we get to that point? And I, and I realize a lot of people weren't educated about that. So when a lot of people ask me, like, Councilwoman, what have you done? You may not see me on the news. Uh, that, that ain't really my thing, Miss Janice. But what I do do very well is read. And what I am is an educated black woman. So go ahead. Go ahead. Tell the truth, sister. I'm going to make sure that my area is covered, not just for, you know, the the the, the fanfare. Right. Not just right. for being popular. Right. But when I leave here, uh, whether it's four years, eight years, whatever, I want District three to feel different. And, right. and it's the move and different. look different. Yeah. And it, yes. it's a feel that I was here. Um, some things gotta change. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't be, well, now Councilwoman Dorsey is here, so now we don't have to get this Christmas party. And, and oh Jan Miss Janice, I, I hope I can say hail on your show. But what Go the ahead. Go ahead. when say, what the I, hell? <laughs> I, I this party every year. But that okay. doesn't change the fact that your neighborhood isn't well lit and that the crime rate is going up and the sidewalks are not fixed and that people don't have jobs and that the, the rate of vacant and abandoned property or rental property. So if you even own your homes, even if people are living in them, are they invested in your neighborhood? Are the, are your neighbors changing every year because of, of, of the landlord or the fact that the fact that in West Louisville, we have the highest percentage of rental property, uh, but the property could be dilapidated. So who's holding those landlords accountable when they're actually making income off of the rental property? You may own your home, but the people who are renting the property aren't investing in it and the people who own it don't care about it. Uh, right. So you move neighborhoods forward. Ms. Janice, that's what I'm interested in. That that changes the needle for me. And that's what I will work my tail off doing. That's what I am working my tail off doing. Um, right now, I'm working on the piece of legislation that has racism as a public health concern. I was on the record by saying I ain't interested in a resolution, could care less about it. A resolution simply says, hey, this is what we would like to do. What I'm interested in is an ordinance. An ordinance says this is what we're going to do. I'm a legislator. So why am I asking? I have the ability to tell you. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm not interested in resolutions. They're really nice ask. Uh, and they're, they're appropriate in some cases. But if I'm declaring racism as a public health crisis, I'm going to be prescriptive about that. And prescriptive meaning, I know my law, I know my I know my policies. So now I'm gonna tell you this is what the goals are going to be, and you're gonna tell me either you can or can't do it. That's fine. You can't do it. Now you're out of compliance. That, mm. that uh, you know. So that that's how I want to move, Miss Chance. Let me let me say this. Uh, when you started off and you said about being a millennial, the first guest that I had on the show was a millennial and he explained to us about how you all move you know that you're not you know that, well that's how we did it one way back in the day as we would mm -hmm. say back in the day and when i met you <laughs> i heard and felt all this energy i'm trying to stay in my seat <laughs> because that's what we need your energy your fortitude your go Go get them. I'm going to make it work. Get out the way. What What was the saying we used to say uh, when I was a cheerleader? Move. Get out the way. Move. Uh. So what you're saying is because when you started talking about the unincorporated area, now just so I can make this clear to, to the audience, that was, I remember there, someone was killed uh, because they tried to cross Algonquin. And the subject was brought up that there were no lights on the south side of the street. Is that correct? I can't hear you. That That is absolutely correct. Wait a minute. Um, let me finish. And yeah. so the lights being this, that was part of that unincorporated area. Why is that area 
unincorporated. Um, so that that's uh before my time, but it was it's old county. Um okay. and what is it used to be so you know before merger and this is a little bit before my time even as a millennial right so <laughs> 2003 is actually when i graduated from high school the merger happened and the oh it was usd which is the old city but then right beside our area uh we were technically the county we weren't a small city so now they call the unincorporated area areas that used to be county that did not fall into a third class city so we're not like a j town or a shively or right. st matthews um or like the, even the highlands is a neighborhood uh so we we aren't even actually a part of a neighborhood we be we've kind of been secondarily adopted into the hallmark neighborhood but that's even what the neighborhood plan will allow us to do is to do a formal adaptation into a neighborhood uh, so when you talk about USD, you're correct, because traditionally the USD area, we don't uh, receive all the city services. We pay for our trash um, and we don't traditionally receive like the services of public works, which is why we did not have the lights on that side of the street. You're exactly right. 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 Well, I'm going to say uh, that's wonderful because I, I know you're probably working on. Are you working on to make that area a part of uh not a uh, an independent area, but that you in, include, but to make it inclusive in District Three. Uh, yes, Miss Shannon. So it, it's it's already included in District Three. What I wanted to do was, regardless of how it falls in the in any type of classification, mm -hmm. what to make sure was that basic services like safety, security, lighting, sidewalks, that those things are included in that residents get those types of amenities um, as a part of being, you know, where, where, regardless of where they fall in the city. To me, mm -hmm. things are basic, right? Okay. So the fact that you should have safe lighting in your neighborhood is a, is a basic, um, to me, right of every Louisvillian. So it right. should Depend on what part of the city you live in, whether you get basic lighting. Now, in this area, the property tax is different, Ms. Janice, because um, we pay less property tax than you would if you live in the USD. Uh, and then there are also the taxes here are cheaper uh, than you would uh, say something like Shively. Okay. Um, Shively is a third class city, so they can actually set their own tax rate, unlike Louisville Metro residents fall under the tax rate of whatever the council sets. Okay. Uh, so Shively has a, actually a higher tax rate than, than Louisville Metro. The property tax in the USD is different. So we don't receive Louisville Fire. We get um, what was Old County Fire or what used to be like the Volunteer Fire Department. So that's what right. we have. We do get Louisville Police and we pay for our own um, trash. Okay. And so the, we don't get all the amenities that, that typically is offered within the Urban Services District. But there are some, and I get that because the tax rate is cheap. But the basic things like lighting, Miss Shannon, to me, that that's non-negotiable. Yeah. Okay. So now it looks like you. I know you're a very busy woman, as you say, and I, I, I can see you on the move. But I want to ask you one more question. Uh, you ask me anything, because. I, I I I love me some you. I probably would have canceled this meeting because I'm actually on my way to the doctor. Uh, I have not felt well, um, so that's what that's why I'm I'm actually waiting for my ride. But like I said, people like there are people who are about the business and changing this community, and you are one of them. So there ain't no way I'm gonna tell you no. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, darling. I'll Let me ask you this question: uh, Are is there have you seen any signs of voter suppression? Oh, Miss Janice. What? I know. Yeah. That's okay. a whole nother conversation. So I, I don't know if you know this, but during the primaries, um, there's some pictures of me on Facebook. I was like pushing wheelchairs uh, at the fairgrounds. Right. I did see you. So uh, to me, that that is huge voter suppression. And it, it typically we think about voter suppression when it comes to African-Americans. That That's one. Um, so that's why I was part of, I was the only council member that actually sued uh, to have more polling locations uh, for West Louisville. So that's how we got more polling locations because I, I went on this pathway of actually create or, or joining in a class action lawsuit. 
uh, to do that. So then the second piece of that, Ms. Janice, was to make sure that um, my, my senior citizens were taken care of. I went out to the fairgrounds and realized that senior citizens, like if you were an elderly person, like how are you going to walk the entire length of the, uh, what is it called? Exhibit oh, Hall A? Because, mm -hmm. because you enter, enter in, one in one part, part. you enter in uh, Hall A and you walk the entire length of that um, arena to the other right. side to submit your ballot. Okay. I saw that and I was like, there is no way that our senior citizens will be able to accomplish this. So um, I went about the pathway of going out there. And then I even realized, Ms. Janice, that the seniors, wh where the handicapped parking was, mm -hmm. was about a half a block between the parking and the door. So literally the first day I was out there, Ms. Janice, two people fell. Mm -hmm. um, trying to get from the door, I mean, from their cars into the entrance of the fairground. So I was like, there, there's no way. Like, my grandmother is dead, but if this woman grandma, I would want somebody helping her. So I called the right. church, called local churches, and I started collecting. Citizens are disabled. I'm kind of losing you. You're breaking up. From. Um, Hold up a minute um, because you're breaking up. You're actually frozen. Can you hear me? I can, I, I can hear you now. Okay, can you hear me? There now? you go. Can you hear yes, me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So there are people to actually move, maneuver them inside through the polling location. So mm -hmm. I want to thank Kentuckians for the Commonwealth. But they put out a call in the middle of the day and people were literally, I, Ms. Janice, I literally pushed people from their cars through the entire process of voting and pushed them back to their cars. So wow. I got a recent call. I put together a whole proposal um, so that we wouldn't encounter that in the generals. But Ms. Janice, we are encountering that yet again. Um, oh, and no. so luckily this time I am grateful because the, the county clerk's department did reach out to me yesterday and they said, Councilwoman, would you be willing to help us again? Now, Ms. Janice, I, I can go on a tangent and say, you know, y'all should have figured this out. I gave you the proposal. Right. This ain't my job because it's really not. But at the end of the day, it's our responsibility. Um, so I have a call with them tomorrow. And so, Ms. Janice, I may be calling on you to help, you know, use your show so we can get some volunteers out there that will be willing to push people. Um, I'll, I'll be probably I'll put calling it out there pastors for you. and churches all weekend if a lot of them are closed to stay where we need to. So, yes, ma'am, um, there is some voter suppression because I feel like that is voter suppression against our most vulnerable population, people who have lived a, a good life here as Americans, but because their bodies may be breaking down on them, I right. think that we are we are removing their democracy and, and I'm gonna fight so that that does not happen. So so you need some wheelchairs? I need wheelchairs and I need volunteers to push them. Okay. So I will I will put that word out uh, for you through the show. Um, Thank you. And if you want to come back on again between now and voting, uh, if you have anything to say, you know, you can call me in the morning and say, Miss Janice, can I be your guest today? And we can come on whatever time is convenient for you. I'll make it convenient for you because whatever I can do to help make things work for us, because we need our elderly to be able to vote. I just lost my mom and voting to her was was number one on her book. I mean, my mother was a type of mother that taught you about being a good citizen, mm. you know, so citizenship and all that. It plays a, a deep role in my life because that's what I'm trying to do with this show. The show is about finding solutions to racism. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What I want to say is one of the ways to find a great solution to racism is to vote and elect young women, aggressive, smart like you. Thank you. That's one way that we get ahead. So I want to say thank you for your time. I hope you feel better.
Thank you. And feel free to call me and let me know whatever you want to let me know. I'll put the word out. After we have our conversation, I usually do a close out of the show and I'll let them know just what you need. So mostly you need the wheelchairs. How do they get in touch with you? They can call the office at 574-1103. Um, my LA's name is Katora Morrow and they can tell her whether they want to sign up uh, any day it, that the polling that the polls are open, so all they have to do is look at the website. If they don't know that information, she can forward it to them. They can tell us what days they want to volunteer, or if they want to donate wheelchairs. The only thing that we ask is that we've been um, we put trackers on them. We got smart this time, Miss Shannon. We actually okay. bought uh, so we're putting trackers on the wheelchairs. So let us know how many they want to donate and what organization. We label them and we track them, and we'll keep up with them to the end of the. Um, to the end of the election, and then we, we will get with them to make sure that they get returned. Wonderful. Well, thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. And our, I know you know this already, but our marker's ready, but we probably won't do a dedication maybe till June, you think? That mm -hmm. sounds good with you? Yep. Okay. And by uh, then, Dennis, I hope you're proud of the new Algonquin Park that you will see. Um, I have. Are you doing some stuff to the park? <laughs> Look, my whole background just fell down. <laughs> Go on. You did what to the park? I implemented septed. Uh, so we have cut back the bushes. They'll be raising some of the trees. They're increasing the lighting. Uh, we're getting a new basketball court. So the basketball court will now be regulation size. All um, right. Pickleball, where well, they're going to resurface the, the uh, court, the pickleball court. We're going to get some new... Um, signage that it ha that has been put up so I i'm really excited and the big thing is the i'm pool. working on hopefully next year algonquin pool should have a actual plan for how we're going to move forward okay wonderful i'm so proud of you do your Thank thing you. sister you just do your thing oh, represent lighting what? along the pathway that, that was the outside i'm missing some other stuff we're actually getting lighting uh, inside the park. So if you knew, if you noticed Algonquin Park, the walking path was not lit. So we're now going to add the, um, what I call the old candle lights or the, um, the, you know, those black, like lights, lanterns, like lantern lights. So okay. we're the lantern lights, uh, now along the pathway. So you'll be able to go from Wilson to Cypress. And that way I told them, you know, it was important to me to make sure that was lit because people use the park to actually you know, get to and from different places. Right. So if you have to work at night or something like that, it's not fair that you have to walk through uh, or walk a couple blocks to go down the neighborhood just so you can feel safe. If we have a city park, it should always feel safe. Right. Um, make sure that we get that lighting along the pathway. So now it will actually be lit from Wilson all the way through to Cypress. Wonderful. And I know the ladies, most of the ladies over in the, uh, Dr. William Weathers Senior Housing, I know they will appreciate all of what you're doing with the park because that's where they go hang out. I know my mother used to live over there and, you know, they're, they're kind of my heartbeat. So uh, do your thing. I'm proud of you and the city should be, the city is blessed just to have you in your position. Go ahead on, Miss Millennium. <laughs> Call me, let me know how things are working out. You take I care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, that's Miss Keisha Dorsey. Well, my whole green screen thing fell to pieces, but that's okay. You know, I keep moving. So I want to thank you for listening in. Miss Keisha Dorsey, what a what an energetic, intelligent young woman that has a plan for District 3. And District 3 should be very proud to have her. Working on the park, Algonquin Park, as she said, was... Uh, one of the places was my first job. I was a park supervisor, and myself and Mr. Ben Watkins started the dirt boat, but that's neither here nor there. But now uh, we're at a point in time where things, the upkeep needs to happen. And uh, during the time of uh, the civil unrest, actually the dirt boat was a place that was a, um, a calm zone, a, a neutral zone where everyone was invited to come. So maybe we can get back to those days and those times and see that park brought back to its uh, glory days. So just remember, um, I, I want you to go vote. Go vote now.
not later, go vote now. Uh, wear your mask, social distance, be respectful of other people. Um, it's not so, it's not a I, my, me thing. This is about uh, being cognizant and, and considerate of other people. Um, that's what we want to talk about uh, as far as racism goes as well, is to be considerate of other people. We have rights. We're human beings. So until Friday, which is tomorrow, we have another councilwoman on board for tomorrow's, uh, as tomorrow's guest. So join us then. And on that note, I'll say bon appetit. Ciao.